So my any cubic photon mono 2 has finally arrived. So let's get it unpacked. We'll set it up and then we'll do a test print. So in here we've got the manual, the screen protector and the leveling paper for the build plate. I've seen a lot of videos of people complaining about the cover being a bit flimsy, but to be honest, it seemed fine. So in here, we've got the build plate. And it's got a, a laser etched pattern on it to aid adhesion of the build to the plate. This is an accessory box which we'll have a look in at uh, later. And then we've got the resin vat. It appears to be cast aluminium, which is better than the normal plastic. And it's got protective film on the underside as well. And it's got marks for volumes with a maximum. The overall size of the printer is a lot smaller than I imagined. Even though I knew the dimensions, it still took me by surprise just how small it was. Let's have a look at the accessory box now. So we've got like a QC card. Got some gloves and a screen protector kit. This is important later as we'll see. We also have a plastic scraper, so that's used for the vat, and then we've got some Allen keys. Next we've got uh, a mask and I'd be interested to see how smelly the resin is. I've heard people complaining about it, but I'm, I've no idea. Don't know how bad it can be considering I spray lacquer paints. And we've got some paint filters, and that's for filtering the, the resin back into the, the bottle, if need be. And then we've got the screw knobs for the vat. We've got a USB, so that's got the manual on it. The Anycubic Slicer program, and a test print, and a calibration print as well. We've got a power pack as well. And then a metal scraper, and that's for removing the model from the build plate. So the power point is on the rear of the machine, along with the switch. So the first thing to do is raise the head. So we're going to tools, move Z, and we press the 10 mil and then we press multiple up times. The screen's very sensitive, so my fat fingers keep knocking into the next menu. But you can see the, the head moving up now. We'll just get that out of the way. And then we'll put on the, the screen protector. I'm gonna They've got a red and black tab because there's, there's a sheet on both sides of the screen protector to be removed. And I got a bit confused in what way around it was from the instructions. I'm using a bit of tape just to hold the screen protector into the final location because there's some holes we need to work around. And then with that done, I can remove it out of the way but still hold it in its proper position. And then we'll remove the LCD protecting film. I'm just going to move the head up again a bit more just to get it clear. It's still in the way where it is. We can now remove the protective film from the screen protector. And 
then we can carefully put the screen protector in place. Now, because we've still got a protective screen on the screen protector, it's okay to use a plastic scraper just to push the air out. Now, you might have seen a little bubble up here, and that gave me no end of trouble. I actually thought it was just a, an air bubble. But it was actually a piece of dust or a fibre and apart from that the screen went on very easily. At some stage I just give up and leave it but I actually went back afterwards and used that yellow package because there was a little sticker in there that is used for picking up dust and fibres and hair. So with the screen done, we can now peel off the top protective cover. And now it's time to install the build plate. So we need to slacken four screws on that first. And then we need to make sure that it's free to move. I'll just bring the head back down so you can see what I'm doing. So we just slacken this knob, the securing knob, and then we can slide the build plate on after I pull off that protective film. And then we can tighten it back up. And just checking it's free to move again. We'll place the sheet of paper and press home. And that will bring the build plate down. And then once it stops moving, we just gently hold it down and we tighten the bolts. And we just hand tight initially and we work from side to side, front to back, just so we don't put any twists or anything. And we'll just give it paper, a bit of a tug to make sure it's held securely. And then we press zero. Z equals zero for enter. So now the build plate is zeroed. So the next thing to do is we'll do an exposure test. And that just makes sure that the LCD screen is working. So we pick the first pattern and then it worked okay. So we'll go and pick a second pattern and I was going to change this time down, but my fat fingers got in the way again, from 6 to 3 seconds. There's no point in having it on for so long. And that's the second part and checked and it's okay. And then we'll go and do the third part and go next. And that's the full screen size. So from that we should be okay to print. Now we can take protective film off the resin vat and get that placed in position. So there's four feet at the bottom of it and they're locating holes. There's a bit of free play but I just held it to the front and then we just screw in the securing knobs. And again, I just tightened them down, finger tight. Didn't go all gorilla on them. So that's all ready for printing. But before we do that, let's unbox the washing cure.
there's something you need to be mindful of the lid and that is because of the UV lights it can damage your eyes there's actually the sticker you can see there on the back and that's detected by a sensor on, on the back of that post so it won't actually switch on when you've got it on cure unless uh, the lid is placed on so the wash tub has got all the accessories in it So we've got the operator's manual, the wash basket, and then you can see the impeller at the bottom, and that spins and agitates the, the alcohol cleaning solution. And it's driven by magnets. It's quite a strange feeling when you weren't expecting it. So on the wash basket, it's got two levels. So if you're doing a small print, you can put the build plate on that. And then if you're doing a deeper print, you can add this extra bracket and it holds the build plate higher. We've got the power pack as well. In the bag, we've got an extra bearing and some allen keys. And then we've got this reflective plate once you take a cover off of it. And that's to reflect the UV light within the curing station. And then you've got the turntable, it sits on top. So the power cord goes into the back and the on off switches at the back as well. And then by default it goes to wash. So if we go to cure, hopefully you can see there's a red light there. So you just keep cycling back and forth. And then we've got the timer. It looks like it's one minute intervals. To start you just press it. However, because we're in cure, the cover's off, nothing should happen. So let's just put the cover on. And there we go, the lights have come on. The turntable's turning. You just stop it by pressing it again. And then for the wash it says to remove this plate. So if we're going to wash, I don't think you need the cover on for washing. Okay, I might just stop it because there's no fluid in there to provide uh, resistance. I understand that every minute it will stop in the reverse direction. So that's that. Okay, so we're now ready to print for the first time. I'm just turn the power on. And what I might do is I might raise the build plate just to give me some space. I'm using this because it's easier to touch rather than using a big fat finger. So for the resin, it's just any cubic standard grey and it says uh, shake well before you use. I'm not sure how much to put in. I've just got a cloth handy as well. But what I'll do is I think I'll fill it up to just under the maximum. Yeah, 
I'm not sure how much to put in. Seems quite a lot, doesn't it? Actually, I'll, leave, I'll do that. It's very frothy in bubbles. I think I must be because of the shape. So, if we go, go print. Now that's a test one there. Well, my understanding is they should be able to print straight off without worrying about slicing and whatnot and setting resin exposure values. And I think the, the exposure values are quite generous to make sure you get a successful print. So it says it's going to take four hours and two minutes. 1448 layers so the first i think five or six layers are burning layers so the exposure time for them is like 25 seconds so it's going to take a couple of minutes just to do the base and then it's two and a half seconds per layer after that and that was a lot i thought i was going to pull over actually shows you the layer it's printing now. Okay, you can, I don't know if you heard that, the FAP layer pulling off. So we're not printing into the normal layers, I think. It's only taking two and a half second exposure times. Okay, so just turn it off first and then we slacken this knob. Well, it's certainly stuck on. I've actually broke it, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is do a pre-wash. I've seen people doing this. I'm assuming it fits in the jar. It just does. And just because I want to save as much uh, the alcohol as possible. Sure we run wash and I believe three or four minutes is ample. Okay, so it's coming up to the first minute, so it's slowing down and it's going in reverse direction. There we go. your bare hands now. You can see if I have broke it. Trying to get it off. So potentially I can maybe reduce the initial burning layers. So before we cure it we need to make sure that it's dry. So you could just leave it to air dry. But what I might do is just come in with the airbrush and just give it a blow. If you can see, you can actually make out the the edge pattern on the, the base there. Okay, so we'll cure it now. We'll change the cure down for three minutes. Okay, we're done. 
So there we have it. A couple of rough spots, just like on this edge here. Oh, but it's coming off easy enough. And a rough bit underneath the any cubic part in the inside. I think I could have given it a bit of a wash. It still feels a bit not sticky or tacky, just you can feel it. Successful print right out of the box. So the plan now is to do some calibration tests to fine tune the exposures and then we can get into parts after that.